Mamie Eisenhower, 11 eye-opening facts about the First Lady of the 50s. Mamie Eisenhower, wife of the 34th U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower, often appears in history books as the quintessential 1950s First Lady, prim, proper, and dedicated to her domestic role. Yet, like all historical figures, there are facets of her life that were less traditional and more controversial. Let's unveil the more scandalous, shocking, and lesser-known aspects of Mamie Eisenhower's life. Fact number one. A courtship for the ages. In the romantic backdrop of the 1910s, when societal norms and protocols were strictly adhered to, the passionate romance between Mamie and Dwight Eisenhower took many by surprise. After crossing paths in 1915, their mutual affection was undeniable, culminating in an engagement in merely seven months. Considering the era's etiquette, such a hasty decision was both rare and audacious. The rapidity of their courtship led to a flurry of speculations, with many speculating that Dwight's impending military assignments may have fast-tracked their union. Additionally, given his growing stature in the military, there was immense public curiosity regarding their relationship dynamics and whether his position influenced the pace of their romance. Number 2. Age is just a number, or is it? Mamie Eisenhower's decision to misrepresent her birth year for several years has long been a topic of intrigue among historians. Publicly declaring 1900 as her birth year, when she was in fact born in 1896, reflects deeper societal issues. During a time when women faced immense pressure to adhere to age-related standards of beauty and demeanor, her decision, albeit minor, becomes a poignant commentary on the societal expectations of the time. The revelation of her actual birth year brings to light the constant scrutiny public figures, especially women, faced regarding their age and the lengths to which they might go to fit a certain mold. Number 3. The Odyssey of Relocations. While the idea of moving homes is stressful for most, imagine relocating 27 times in a lifetime. This was the reality for Mamie Eisenhower, who, due to her husband Dwight's ever-evolving military assignments, had to constantly adapt to new homes, environments, and communities. On the surface, it stands as a testament to their commitment to duty. However, the underlying layers reveal a more complex narrative. The incessant moving not only disrupted her daily life but was also mentally and emotionally taxing. The relentless need to establish a home, only to dismantle it shortly after, took its toll on Mamie. The physical exhaustion combined with the emotional roller coaster of hellos and goodbyes made her journey as a military spouse both admirable and heart-wrenching. Number 4. A Pill for Every Ill The 1950s were an era marked by rapid socioeconomic changes, resulting in a society grappling with newfound pressures. A byproduct of this era was the rampant use of prescription medications, especially among the upper echelons of society. Mamie Eisenhower, the First Lady, was no exception. Plagued with frequent ailments, her heavy reliance on sleeping pills and tranquilizers became widely known. Though these medications were commonly prescribed during the 50s, the magnitude of Mamie's consumption was a cause for concern for those in her inner circle. Such a degree of dependency in someone of her stature inevitably stoked public discussions about the broader issue of substance dependency and its implications on health and public image. Number 5. A bathtub worth its weight in gold. The White House, as an emblem of American democracy, has always been under the watchful eye of the public. Thus, when in 1953, news emerged about an extravagant renovation under the Eisenhower administration, it became the talk of the nation. Among the many opulent upgrades, one in particular stood out, a bathtub so lavish that it was dubbed the Million Dollar Bathtub. While the name was certainly an exaggeration, it signified the astronomical cost associated with its installation. Critics lambasted the administration for such perceived excess in a time when many Americans still grappled with post-war economic challenges. The bathtub became emblematic of a wider debate about fiscal responsibility and the optics of presidential spending. Number 6. A Fudgy Affair with Bourbon The 1950s were marked by conservatism, especially in matters of personal choices and public decorum. In this backdrop, Mamie Eisenhower's fondness for her Mamie's Million Dollar Fudge was more than just a culinary preference. 
Infused with a generous amount of bourbon, this treat was a bold statement in those times. Given President Dwight Eisenhower's health condition, which necessitated an alcohol-restricted diet, Mamie's indulgence was all the more conspicuous. Her unabashed enjoyment of this alcoholic dessert, in a time when such choices could easily become fodder for public criticism, showcased her independent spirit and unwillingness to be confined by societal norms. Number 7. Tickled Pink, The Mamie Pink Phenomenon For a first lady, every action, choice, and preference can set a trend, and Mamie Eisenhower's love for the color pink was no exception. Her fondness for the shade was not limited to her wardrobe, it permeated various facets of her life. Her unabashed embrace of pink led to the 1950s seeing a surge in the popularity of the color, with it adorning everything from home decor to clothing, especially the popular poodle skirts of the era. Dubbed Mamie Pink, this hue became synonymous with her identity. However, some quarters felt her penchant for such a girlish color was unbecoming of a first lady's stature, criticizing it as a superficial obsession in contrast to the grave socio-political challenges of the time. Number 8. Sheltered in Fear, Preparing for the Worst The Cold War era was marked by an omnipresent dread of nuclear warfare, and this anxiety touched everyone, including the first family. Seeking a semblance of security amidst this paranoia, Mamie Eisenhower commissioned the construction of a bomb shelter on their Gettysburg farm. More than a personal sanctuary, this shelter stood as a testament to the broader national psyche of the time, reflecting the widespread apprehension of a potential nuclear catastrophe. It was an unsettling reminder that even those at the zenith of power were not immune to the threats that loomed large during the Cold War. Number 9. A Refreshing Breeze from the West The annals of White House history predominantly feature first ladies hailing from the eastern or southern states. In this context, Mamie Eisenhower's roots were a breath of fresh air. Born in the heartland town of Boone, Iowa, she brought with her a distinct Midwestern charm and sensibility, making her stand apart from many of her predecessors. While her origins weren't scandalous, they were certainly noteworthy. Her background offered a different perspective and approach, resonating with a vast section of the American populace and adding a unique chapter to the diverse tapestry of First Lady's legacies. Number 10. Navigating Through Scandalous Waters, The K. Summersby Affair The 1940s war era witnessed the blossoming of a close relationship between General Dwight D. Eisenhower and his British driver, K. Summersby. The nature of their bond led to rife speculation and the birth of rumors suggesting a romantic involvement. Dwight consistently and vehemently denied these allegations, but the damage was done. For many, these stories weren't just tabloid fodder, they posed a personal and emotional challenge. The incessant whispers and sideways glances were not only a test of her trust in her husband but also a strain on her personal well-being. The situation underscored the unique challenges First Ladies face, often having to shoulder public scrutiny of their private lives. Number 11. Sidestepping Social Tumult, Mamie and the Civil Rights Movement The 1950s were not just about rock and roll and sock hops, they were also the crucible for the burgeoning civil rights movement. As the nation grappled with profound questions of racial equality and justice, the spotlight naturally turned to the White House for leadership and guidance. However, Mamie Eisenhower largely remained silent on these seismic shifts, choosing not to address them publicly. This conspicuous avoidance did not go unnoticed. Many activists and advocates of the movement viewed her silence as a tacit disapproval or, at best, indifference, earning her criticism for not using her influential position to champion the cause of civil rights. <laughs>